Hello YouTube, welcome to this video. And today we are going to be examining a projectile motion question where there is a soccer ball kicked with an initial velocity of 16.5 meters a second with an angle of 35 degrees above the horizontal. And the question is asking us to find the time of flight, the range, and the maximum height of the ball. All right, so let's start with um, part A. Okay, so for time of flight, we basically need to find um, the x-intercepts of the projectile motion uh, quadratic equation or quadratic function. So all projectile motion questions, you use this generic format. H of t, the height with respect to time, is equal to g over 2. So minus 9.8 over 2 is... Um, minus 4.9, so minus 4.9 t squared plus the y component of the initial velocity times t plus the initial height, h naught. And basically inside this problem, h naught is 0. This is zero so we can cancel that out for now for this specific problem all right but anyway um if we now plug in viy we will get which is equal to minus 4.9 um, t squared plus now how do you find the y component well y component is associated with um Sign. So therefore, it's going to be 16.5, uh, 16.5 sine 35 degrees T. All right? And you may be wondering, how do I know it's sine and not cos and not tan? Well, if we draw this out, so we have the initial velocity at 35 degrees above the horizontal. Let me draw that in a different color. All right, if we have this guy there at 35 degrees above the horizontal, we want to find the vertical component, the y component, which is, I'll draw it in yellow, um, which is this over here. And we know that, that this is 16.5. The blue, the magnitude of the blue line is 16.5. We can easily find the magnitude of the yellow line by doing well this is opposite so this is going to be opposite over hypotenuse and yep sine is opposite over hypotenuse so therefore it would be sine 35 degrees is equal to opposite which is we don't know over um 16.5 and maybe I should call that opposite rather than an X for clarity. Uh, opposite over 16.5. So then opposite is equal to 16.5 times sine of 35 degrees. There we go. All right, so we have this function established now. Now all we got to do is find the zeros, the x-intercepts. So what we can do now, we can set this function to zero. So we do zero is equal to minus 4.9 t squared plus 16.5 sine 35 degrees, 35 degrees times t. And we plug it into the quadratic formula. All right. So we have t is equal to minus b plus or minus square root of b squared over 2a. So we do minus b. So minus 16.5 uh, sine 35 degrees plus or minus square root of 16.5 sine 35 squared minus 4 times a, which is minus 4.9, 
times C, which is zero. Oops, did the wrong bracket there. Um, and we'll close the square root there. And this is all divided by two times A, which is minus 4.9. So if I plug this into the calculator, you would get, um, getting my trusty old Casio calculator out. All right, we would get, okay, so minus 16.5 times sine 35 plus square root of 16.5 sine 35, and this is all squared. Um, and basically, and basically, uh, this term, the minus four times minus 4.9 times zero would cancel out. So that's a zero, and this would all be over two times minus 4.9. All right, so we would get time is equal to zero, and time is also equal to, so the zero is the positive root, and then the negative root is approximately, um, let's use the approximately equal sign there, and then time is approximately equal to 1.93 um, seconds. Okay, so here's our answer, zero. Obviously that's when it started, that's one of the roots. So we take the bigger one, we take the 1.93 seconds. So basically that's when uh, it landed. Now in some projectile motion questions, yes, you'll get a negative answer for T. Don't subtract them or do anything like that. Just take the larger number. So it is um, T is equal to 1.93 seconds. All right. Um, now the next thing we have to do is uh, find the range. So, okay, let's find the range of this. Um, so that's very simple. Let me just put B. Okay, so range is the x. It's the x component of the of the displacement that the um, ball traveled. So that would be dx is equal to vx times delta t. So we now know delta t. Delta t is 1.93 seconds. Um, delta t is 1.93 seconds, and we have the initial velocity 16.5 meters a second. Right. So dx is going to be equal to vx. So if we have, let me draw the same diagram again. And this time, instead of sine, since it's the x component, is going to be uh, cos. All right, so we have that. We have 16.5, and it's 35 degrees from the horizontal, right? So then this component over here, the x component, that is going to be, well, this would be adjacent. This would be hypotenuse, so therefore the adjacent, uh, so cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And if you're trying to find the adjacent, so adjacent is going to be equal to hypotenuse times cosine theta, and therefore that's going to be equal to um, hypotenuse, which is 16.5 times cosine 35. And that is our Vx. All right, so 16.5 times cosine 35 degrees times, well, this is um, meters a second. This would be meters a second multiplied by 1.93 seconds. So the seconds cancel out, and the answer you get is in meters. So if we put this in our calculator, 16.5 cosine 35, we are uh, times 1.93, and I'll use the exact value. 
we're going to get approximately, I'll put that dot up there, 26.1 meters. All right, that is our answer for this question about the range. Now, if we answer the question about the maximum height. Alrighty, so now we have part C. We want to find the maximum height. The max height. Well, what does that involve? That involves finding the x midpoint of, of the parabola, right? And the x midpoint of the parabola always, always associates itself with the y coordinate of the vertex, in this case, which is going to be the height at the maximum point. So basically, that's the way we're going to approach this question to find the maximum height. Okay, the way we can find uh, t max, the time it is when it's at the max height, is by minus b over 2a. And if you're interested to know how we get minus b over 2a, check out my um, video on that. Uh, that can, in fact, comes from differential calculus. But that's a separate story anyway. So minus b, so that's going to be minus 16.5. And of course, these values are being taken from the h of t function. So uh, minus 16.5 times, um, times sine of 35 degrees over 2 times a, so 2 times minus 4.9. And these minuses cancel out, so we are left with, and we can multiply the bottom part, so we are left with 16.5 uh, over 9.8 sine 35 degrees. There we go. Now, we have our function, h of t, let's just remind ourselves of it, minus 4.9t squared plus 16.5 sine 35 degrees times t. And we basically got to find h at t max. That's going to be our max height. All we got to do, very simple, very basic uh, um, functions over here, whoops, uh, minus 4.9 times 16.5 over 9.8 times sine 35 um, plus 16.5 sine 35 degrees times 16.5 5 sine 35 over 9.8 all right and h of t max is equal to oh i forgot to add a little squared there we get approximately approximately 4. Point, um, five seven meters all right so that's the way you calculate for the max height of the soccer ball well um that's it for that's it for this video for this question if you have any uh, comments or, or questions about this problem please don't hesitate to ask them in the comments um and please consider liking and subscribing and i hope to see you next time Thank you very much. Have a good day.